Who keeps leaving the Canada door open? Tundra Joe, I am not paying to heat the whole damn continent. been in a full bore sprint trying to get ready for my airworthiness inspection which is scheduled for tomorrow because my DAR has to travel here from Portland and then he leaves the state for like two and a half weeks so if I don't get it done tomorrow it's not happening this month well here's some clues that might cue you in on some issues that we're having and it's not because I'm not ready I'm that's the exciting part <laughs> and this is the reason yeah so, not only is it dumping, but it, there's no temperature. It is zero degrees Fahrenheit out there. DAR might have some issues getting over government pass by Mount Hood up here to lovely Bend for the inspection of the backcountry bogey. So that gives me the opportunity to tour you guys around kind of what I've been up to getting ready for airworthiness. Now that the hangar has warmed up and my camera woman showed up and the dog showed up, we're gonna walk around the bogey and talk to you about the final touches because the bogey is about ready. There's like two more things that I have to do before the DAR shows up. From the last video, you can tell there was a lot left I had to do. We're gonna go through my punch list. So let's first start off with the rudder. This is one of the two things that I have left to do is rig it. So I'm having issues getting the full throw out of the rudder. It's 28 degrees left to right and that's not something you wanna uh, be on the on the short side of with the tail dragger, right? Especially right rudder. So um, I've rigged up or I put up a little template that I made and it's not getting the required 28 degrees. It's quite a bit short. So looking underneath, there's a rudder stop that's made out of aluminum that I just need to kind of trim back to allow it a little bit further travel. So we'll get that knocked out. It's just a little bit hard to, to get to. That's why it's up on its tail, as well as everything is so much easier to work on with the aircraft in a flying configuration rather than in on its uh, tail wheel. On the subject of the tail, we rigged the elevator and rigged the trim tab. So the elevator was really probably the easiest flight control to rig, but the one th point thing that I'll point out, and let me po point out first of all that I'm a first time builder. I am not the authority on this at all. I'm just telling you my experience, not what to do. Don't copy me. Um, when I get into flight tests, I'll be a little bit more authoritative uh, in that subject. And hopefully about a week's time or less. The elevator, the first thing you wanna do before you start rigging control deflection is neutral stick. So I, I threw the seat in the aircraft and I felt kind of where I thought neutral stick would be. And I needed to have the stick come back. And that meant shortening the push pull tube. There's three uh, eyelets that you can shorten up. So I shortened it up to get it kind of where I wanted to have neutral and I wanted to make sure that I had full travel from that position. Then you just go ahead and drill two holes and create the collars for the stops uh, and the stop block under the baggage floor to get the, the correct throw. And then the trim tab was a little bit confusing because I'm running vertical power, which displays the trim position to the G3X touch. And then the G3X touch through the use of the servos, that's gonna control the, the pitch trim speed per the aircraft speed, right? So it'll slow down the pitch trim speed if you're at higher airspeed. So chasing all those variables down was a little bit tricky, as well as I thought that you could, you could electronically limit the trim tab, but you cannot. It's all mechanically rigged is what I'm trying to say. And that's just right here with a um, push-pull tube, nothing too cosmic about that. Use the Deutsch connector right there and just tidied these up. I did add one bolt with an 8L clamp. So see the bolt right here onto the Longeron and 8L clamp right there just to tidy up everything and so it doesn't conflict with the push-pull tube. I love it. A little bit of dirt from the taxi test. Shows that I've been using it, but I didn't realize you had to cut a notch in this tail cone. It's clear that you gotta cut this notch, but I was a little bit unclear about the routing of this guy right here. So I learned that you want to disconnect the tail wheel steering mechanism to tension the rudder. So the, the rudder is all tension. The, the two systems you got to tension are the rudder and then the ailerons. So we'll talk about each. I think these could, could use a little bit more tension because the manual says to have these springs about half compressed. So they're not quite half compressed. 
Um, then it's gonna have kind of loose steering. By the way, I did the first taxi test. All right, taxi test to success. Idle is fixed and magnetometer is calibrated. Out of hearts is calibrated. Uh, we are ready to go. This taxi is back to the hangar. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me uh, being stoked about that and trying to beat the storm in. Awesome. So you want to disconnect this system to, to tension up the rudders and then uh, the actual rudder cable go into the, the rudder itself. Once you reconnect the rudder cables or the tailwheel cables, then um, you wanna check the tension on the tailwheel cables. And again, I think I'm a little bit light on that. Airworthy, absolutely. So I'm not gonna do that before DAR shows up. You can see these are hanging right here. You've got to, um, while these are disconnected, get your steering cable exit fairings uh, on because you can't take them on and off. Unless you cut a slit in it, I suppose, but I didn't wanna cut a slit in it. Let's work our way up the empanage. There's nothing to do back here. So right here, the, the flap fairing didn't work out as good as I was hoping. There's a little bit of a gap right here. So ideally it'd be touching. It's not quite touching right there. So what I would recommend, or if I were to do this over again, this is the way I'll, I'll word it, is I wouldn't drill the holes mounting this until after the flap is rigged. So I, I mounted this like months and months ago. So I regret doing it back then. I would have just tweaked it. It's not bad. It's definitely airworthy in my humble opinion okay so the flaps are rigged so they they're gonna look a little bit lower than the aileron which is by design because once you start flying you're gonna have air loads pushing it up and they're gonna be aligned tension the ailerons so i've got a cable tension meter here and we're looking at the 332 cable so the black numbers on the outside there is 332 so for the aileron, you want to test in two places, each side on right here. So we're looking between 20 and 25. So we're right at 25, which would be good because it'll stretch over time and still be within tolerance. 25 right there. Okay, the other cable that you need tension is the rudder cable. So this is less tension. It's 15 to 20. So we're right at 20. Good. Do this on the other side. Good. I had to re-rig them because once I was done rigging, the, the stick was off to the to the right a little bit at neutral aileron. Um, but that was pretty easy. It was just loosening one turnbuckle and, and tightening the other, and that brought the stick back to, to neutral true. On the leading edge, we've got the landing light silicone. So we got a bead of silicone in there. So that's all watertight and uh, finished, I masked it off nice, turned out pretty good. We got all the inspection panels disconnected. Thank you, Ani. Oh, let's talk about the doors. First off, before I open the door, I'll show you just a little piece of foam tape I, I put right here, just so that you're not banging your wing when you open the, open the door. So, and then you can see the door handle mechanism. This is apparently an older version, so I think they have got a newer uh, aluminum version I'll upgrade to at some point, but um, but this is super secure. I'm really happy with how that turned out. The next thing we'll talk about is the throttle. So the way I initially had the throttle installed is I didn't have enough throw for the throttle arm to hit both the idle stop and the full throttle stop. What I've been told is this is the idle adjustment. So it needs to hit that, that little peg, which it is right now. The full throttle, that bar needs to hit that peg. Well, initially I wasn't getting nearly enough throw and I was thinking, gosh, am I gonna have to drill up further on this arm to get more throw? So I kind of chased that down, scratching my head for a long time and in the answer ended up being there's a nut behind the panel where the, the throttle connects to the instrument panel that you loosen and then it, that'll give you some more pull on the idle side I suppose of the throttle. Everything else with the engine was good just kind of checking making sure the cotter pins were in making sure jam nuts were tight with Loctite if necessary. After the engine run I found a fuel leak at my fuel pressure sensor right here so what I've realized that the thread sealant I use, a lot of people don't like. Okay, well I pulled the sensor manifold off, checked for cracks, don't see anything. I'm just gonna take everything off and rather than use the Permatex brown gooey 
thread seat, fuel resistant thread sealant. I'm gonna go with the recommended Loctite 567. Regardless, just gonna clean everything off, start over with this stuff. And hopefully we can get a nice tidy sensor manifold. So I think this guy was the culprit. It was pretty loose. So they're all secured in there now with Loctite 567. So time to put it back on the, oh, you know what? I need to put in the manifold. No more leak, so that's good. Ran the engine yesterday and I was really happy with all that. Okay, so this is the second thing that I have to get done before the DAR shows up is, I've waited for this because it just, a, I couldn't figure out how it's supposed to go. It was a little bit confusing because I'm not the smartest. And number two is I wanted to make sure that I'm using the right material because I don't want to epoxy this in. It says to epoxy it in, but if you can tell, this is not painted because I'm waiting for Aerosport products to put out a carbon version of this wing root fairing. And then I'll, I'll swap those out, get those painted to look a lot more finished. But if you look under here, Ani, um, you can see that this is taped right now. Um, and this is apparently how it's supposed to go. So this fairing goes on the outside of this closeout right now, right here, because you can unscrew this panel and then slide it aft and remove that. Thank you, Kip, for the uh, guidance on that. All right, cockpit stuff, labels. I don't even know if, if spins prohibited is required, but I've got that in there just in case it is. Thank you, Ani, for your help on doing that. The next labels are the, the control stick labels. There were the ones that came with the, the Ray Allen, but we didn't have them, so we just kind of made them just to make sure that we're legal for the inspection, hopefully tomorrow. And then the next one, the mixture wasn't labeled, so we put a mixture label down here. Okay, right ignition is now labeled. It's the circuit breaker for the right hand light speed ignition. So, uh, and then <laughs> the big label, the big fun label, it's in a, a cool carbon fiber black experimental. So this is of course gonna go all the way up here. So all the closeout panels are removed for the inspection, of course. Okay, let's talk further about what I did in the cockpit. Primarily three things, tensioning cables, cleaning up wires, and rewiring the light speed ignition for correcting the RPM issue, okay? Stay tuned to the end and I'll talk you through exactly what that RPM wiring issue was. Tensioning the rudder, cables just take so much trial and error because there's so many variables with how many different uh, holes you can use on the rudder cables versus the rudder return system and then getting it at the correct tension uh, and whatnot. So that just takes a lot of time. And then I talked about the light speed ignition, which I'll, I'll talk more in depth at the end. I also swapped out one of the, their really cheap plastic D sub connectors for a metallic, really, really expensive Garmin one. We got the wires all cleaned up and safely routed away from flight control cables. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, I got the punch list here. There was a uh, I had to put the oil door piano wire hinge in the lower wing root closeouts. We talked to safety wire. There's a whole bunch of places that I needed to get done. I got that done. I had some help from my friend, Terry. Thank you, Terry. The oil filter I just did, the alternator. He helped me get a few uh, places of safety wire, the prop hub. Even if the prop were off, you still can't get a traditional torque wrench in here. So I borrowed a crow foot table figure 7-2 new math with a half inch drive barely changed 28 and a half foot pounds versus 28 so. and then of course the turnbuckles were not too hard they were pretty intimidating right off the bat but you just follow the advisory circular and go to youtube university if you need to and i figured it out checking all the cotter pins the places i needed them were aileron cable attached to the control stick the aileron cable pulleys and then of course the throttle arm got those knocked out the cowl quarter turn hardware. So the other thing I did on, when I had the vertical power system all hooked up with the ethernet cable was uh, I needed to reset the wig wag. So I set them to 52 knots rather than zero knots for the test. Garmin vertical power, I love you. Oh my God, I just discovered this. So you can see we're set to wig wag because I'm testing it set to zero knots. So if you're above whatever threshold you are, you're auto wig wagon and there's no way to turn it off, right? Wrong. Go to the vertical power page, hit the menu button, and go wig wag steady. Boom. Oh my gosh, this is this is life changing. We needed to torque the rudder cable bolts at the pedals. We also greased the tail wheel. There was only one 
spot in this whole airplane that takes grease. Uh, had some issues with the grease gun, but I had to grease the tailwheel. Got that all successfully done. Thank you to you guys who pointed this out on the engine run. They, a lot of people didn't like the fact that a fuel line was touching exhaust. We solved that. We pulled the um, fuel tight uh, well away from the exhaust now. All right, I'm gonna get to work on the last remaining punch list items, but thank you guys for being so supportive of me during this whole process and guys looking over my shoulder. I sure appreciate pointing out things like that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm putting this all on YouTube is for accountability for myself and as well as it's my build log. I'm sure this will come up in my DAR inspection. Wish me luck. I'm gonna need a little bit of luck because uh, I think I'm ready, but there's always the things that you don't know as a first time home builder. All right, I'm stalling, I'm out, zoom out. Well, I just use this piece of 63,000, 6061 aluminum to shovel out in front of the hangar. It's seven below Fahrenheit. We'll see if he makes it tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Till next time, Steve, you're cleared direct. Hey.